horrible for families all across this country. Questions? Senator, 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 Senator Ernst, can you explain why you are concerned about the House Republican effort to get rid of Liz Cheney from leadership? Uh, I'm, and thank you. I'm, I'm not concerned about their their efforts necessarily. The House business is the House business. All I'm stating is that if someone has something to say, they should feel okay to say it. All of us have very different thoughts. But my point is, at the end of the day, we should not be arguing about who's saying what. We should focus on unity, coming together, and making sure that Republicans are securing seats in 2022. The American people, they are very tired of what they see going on in the federal government and this march to the left. We are moving our country in the direction of socialism. We need Republicans to stop that. So at the end of the day, we need to unify. We need to come together. House business is house business. But I believe if we need to express something, we should feel free to express it. Over the weekend, Leader McConnell indicated that an infrastructure package might be in the range of $600 billion to $800 billion. Can you talk about that a little bit? And is $800 billion, how flexible are you on the upper end of that? <laughs> well, I would say that um, you know, Senator McConnell articulated a view, I think, that probably describes where he thinks Republicans might be able to land. Uh, we'll have different views within our conference. I think the bill that uh, Senator Capito put together is somewhere on the $564 billion level, but a lot of it for our members will come down to how it's offset, how it's paid for. And obviously, as uh, was pointed out by Senator Brasso, we do not want to see the 2017 tax law in any way undone. Um, it, raising taxes would be a terrible idea. We had the best economy in, in a generation prior to the pandemic. A lot of that, I think, had to do with the tax policies that we put in place in 2017. And reversing those, I think, would, uh, would reverse a lot of the progress and the gains that we've had. And right now, the, the economy is really poised to take off. Um, raising taxes on businesses, small and large, on individuals, on farmers and ranchers, would be the opposite thing to do if you're interested in getting growth in the economy, getting people back to work, and getting wages up. Senator, what is it about a 21 percent corporate tax rate that makes that number so magical? I mean, if it's 22 or 24, it's still lower than it's been in decades. Why is that number so untouchable for you? Well, I think part of it is, um, one, if you do raise it at all. Right now, we're kind of in the middle of the world. If you look at the developed countries in the world, if you raised it to 25, for example, you would put us at the very top when you add in tax or state taxes as well. So it does put us at the very um, high end, and frankly, 25 would put us, uh, we'd be number one in the world again, which is what we were trying to avoid when we lowered taxes back in 2017 to enable our businesses to be more competitive globally. The other thing, I think, you, you know, the Democrats obviously would like to undo the whole thing. And if you, um, if you start with the corporate tax, they're going to want to move to the, to the uh, pass-through taxes, which hits all the small businesses in this country. They've already talked about wanting to do, undo a lot of the death tax uh, provisions that were incorporated into the 2017 law. Uh, I think it's a slippery slope. And, um, and they're going and they're to need a lot of revenue to pay for the things that they're talking about doing. So uh, I don't think it stops at the, uh, at the corporate rate. Senator, what are you looking for out of this infrastructure meeting? What would give you a sense that this was worthwhile or there's actually something viable to keep talking about? I think if the, um, the president uh, you know, sits down and listens um, respectfully, which I think he will do, uh, and I'm, I'm sure he has done in, in past meetings, that would be nice, but I don't think it's enough. I think he has to demonstrate a willingness to uh, sit down with Republican leaders in this area, and a lot of our rankers, ranking members, are going to be at that meeting tomorrow, uh, or I should say on Thursday, the uh, leadership will be at the meeting tomorrow, but, and, uh, and come out and say that he wants to put together a group to actually sit down and see if there's a way we can find agreement on true infrastructure, uh, as defined, I think, as commonly uh, defined by uh, people in this country. And I think most people understand what infrastructure is. They've tried to redefine it to include a lot of other things that uh, I think fall way outside of the bounds of what um, most people in our, you know, English language described as infrastructure. But if they're interested in infrastructure bill, there's Republican support for doing it. Um, I think there's probably some flexibility in what that amount is. A lot of it would come down to how it's paid for, how it's offset. 
but I would like to see uh, the president sit down and express more than just a willingness to listen, but a willingness to take action uh, to work in a bipartisan way to try and get a deal. Senator, beyond what's happening in the House, is it difficult to remain unified as a party when former President Trump keeps repeating that the election was stolen from him? Well, I mean, I, what I've said before, and I mean this, I, I don't think that um, relitigating the 2020 election is a winning strategy going forward. I think if we're going to win elections in 2022, we have to be talking about the issues the American people care about. Jobs, the economy, national security, safe neighborhoods, strong borders, energy independence. Um, those are the types of issues, I think, that are going to resonate with uh, voters in 2022. And uh, I hope that all Republicans um, can start looking forward, not looking backward, but talk about what we're going to do to try and improve the lives of the American people and, uh, and make an argument for why they ought to put us back in power in the House and the Senate in 2022. Trump would stop talking about it? Stop saying that? Well, control. I mean, I don't control what the, you know, the, the former president does. Nobody does. But I think in terms of the things that we're going to talk about here, you've heard Senator McConnell say this repeatedly. And I think our members are unified about uh, having an agenda going forward that, that addresses the issues that I mentioned, and at the same time draws a contrast with the Biden administration and the Democrats' policies, which we think are very counter to growing the economy and creating jobs and building on the economic progress that was made prior to the pandemic. So um, there's going to be a very clear choice when you talk about elections to me are about differences, and the differences couldn't be more clear as we set up uh, you know, and prepare for 2022, but we've got to be looking forward, not looking back. Senator Thank you, guys.